Welcome to War of the Weird, a war between friends with a stranger to discovery the greater chance of victory. Last time, Mystic launched an attack with the questionable health craze known as Neurin Therapy. Broomy was not phased as he struck back with the theory about the color blue that puts our very perception into question. The public cast their vote and in the end, Broomy emerged victorious. But the war rages on with this week's battle. Gallagher 2 vs. Pepsi's Navy, with special guest, The Real Nikki. Hello and welcome to War of the Weirds. I'm Broomy. And I'm Mystic. And we're here doing a show where we tell one another the strangest stories we can find. Uh, but today is a special day because we have a special guest, a wonderful streamer, a fantastic human. Uh, it's the real Nikki. Hello. With a one instead of the first eye. Yeah, you got to clarify uh, that because people yeah, might yeah, yeah, think yeah. I'm the real like Nikki with the eye. <laughs> You're not the real. That's real very Nikki. different. Yeah. 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 But um, yeah, thanks for having me here. It's International Friend Friend Day. Oh, cool! So is. You're you're our friend. Yay! Yeah, it's official. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so official. boom, we did it. Uh, so end of the podcast. Uh, no, <laughs> That's the only reason that she's here. Nice. Yeah, yeah, but no, she is here because we are we are kind of shifting the podcast a little bit away from the idea of people voting because not a ton of people are voting. Yeah. So we want to do some creative stuff uh, with uh, deciding who the winner is. We so still want to punish things... each other? So... <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> oh, man. One of the things is we're going to have some guests on, and they're going to be the ones at the end of the show to decide which was the stranger tale between my stick and Brome. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it, it was fanciness talking uh, mm. there. Um, but yeah, so I pretended to be a broom for a year. Mystic is a milk chugging <laughs> acrobat. Oh. What would you say is strange about you, Nikki? Um, what is strange about me? Yeah. I feel like I'm the most average person ever. <laughs> Here's where you come to reveal your deep, dark, weird secrets. Yeah. Um, uh, the first thing us, that Nikki. I thought of was uh, that your favorite movie is Troy. What's wrong with that? I find that bizarre. <laughs> is that about, uh, that's about the Haskell Musical guy, right? It's like about uh, the scenes, look at him. Oh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What? I don't know <laughs> High School Musical. I assume that's the main character or whatever. Troy Bolton? Zac oh, Efron? Please, guys. <laughs> you know he's please, Michael Bolton's son. You're hurting son. me here. <laughs> Troy Bolton is Michael Bolton's son. That's how he got the role. Oh. But but yeah, that that was my silly example. Do you anything coming to mind? Um... What is something weird about like, me? <laughs> the fun thing is, we could have given her a little time to prep before no, recording. No, absolutely but we just want not. to put her on the spot. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I just want to be the worst host imaginable. Yeah, yeah. I am well, taking you know, my influence we have both from talked. Eric Andre. <laughs> uh, Zach Galifianakis. Or, sorry, not sure. Zach Galifianakis. Uh, yeah. No, yeah, that yeah. is right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, well, we, we've, we've many a times talked about how the... The scripted uh, late night conversations are the worst. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, we're keeping it keeping it loose. Yeah. Um, it also, you know, you're you're a streamer, so you should be able to you know improvise. Come up with something. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. Okay, I thought of I thought of something. It's like really random, right. but I okay. always we paused mentioned... the video for like five minutes for her to come up with something. By the way, we just <laughs> it together. So yeah, yeah. It sound like that. <laughs> um, I used to eat toothpaste when i was a kid but i think that's pretty oh, weird okay really like that's probably why i stopped growing um <laughs> how, how tall are you i'm like five foot zero. Oh, really okay wow on a good um, day but <laughs> i did not like the minty ones i okay. was okay my palate was not cool with the peppermint yet at that uh, yeah. age but yeah 
I like the uh, kid ones because they, they, they make them taste like candy. So I used to eat yeah. them. And my parents used to get very yeah, angry at that's me. That's kind of probably why you shouldn't have them, right? Yeah. So just eat them. <laughs> yeah. 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 That, that yeah. making it taste like candy thing didn't work out. It, it backfired. <laughs> I, like I mean, the ones... but if you're chewing it enough, it might be doing its job. That's true. That's true. I guess. I yeah. like the, the Aqua Fresh, you know, like in the stand up tube. It has a little thing that you peel back and it squeezes out. Ah. And then when you like release the nozzle, it cuts it off. But it's a, yeah, it's a very unique flavor. I don't know what you guys are talking about with all your fancy toothpaste. Well, I don't I go, know what he's talking about either. So. He's baking soda. He's yeah, yeah. fashion. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. I just pour baking soda in my mouth and then <clears throat> swish it around. just spit, and that's yeah. how I do all my dental hygiene. Oh, okay. I'll, yeah. I'll give that a Take try. Take notes, kids. This yeah. is how you should really be brushing your teeth. <laughs> Right. Yeah. Support so, your dentist. <laughs> so, should I begin my first tale, or my only tale of the episode? <laughs> I was going to say I only prepared one. So, I yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> your first tale of many. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. I have uh, forty different tales. Yeah. I think we should uh, let Nikki go first. You prepared something, right? Oh, Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, no I guess. Ate toothpaste. No, no, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's all I got. <laughs> Uh, and then you pick yourself to win at the yeah. <laughs> Not broken at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, do e- either of you know who Gallagher is? Yes. Yeah. Uh, no. Yeah. Doesn't he, like, smash watermelons with a mallet or something? Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's a Does comedian. he not have a last name, or is that his last name? Uh, that is his last name, but oh. that's what he went by. Uh, okay. Uh, what was his first name? Leo. Leo? Okay. Uh, uh, but... Didn't he, like... Is something with the audience? Didn't he... Was there... I don't know. I mean, he, like... I'm gonna... There's a story. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm just trying to guess it. I'm trying to divine your story. Yeah. I appreciate that. But mm-hmm. he's a comedian and uh, a strange, mm-hmm. unpleasant man. Um... As you mentioned, he smashed watermelons, but he also would mm. smash fruit and various other things. That was like one of his bits. It's called mm. the Sledgeomatic, kind of like yeah. a, a parody of a a uh, an infomercial or whatever. Right. Uh, but uh, in the eighties, he was gigantic. Okay. Um, he must not have not toothpaste. Yeah, I was gonna say I'm not talking obesity. I'm talking about <laughs> he was a household name. Okay. Um, everybody knew Gallagher. It's on everybody's lips. You mm. <laughs> just say his name, and uh, somebody will have sex with you. I don't know. Um, <laughs> I will okay. Try that yeah. Right yeah. Now. We'll try that out. <laughs> yeah. Hey, uh, Rumi. But, mm-hmm. Gallagher. <laughs> All right. I've booked my <laughs> flight. This undeniable um, urge to. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Uh, but throughout his career, he made 16 comedy specials. Oh, wow. That doesn't uh, sound like a lot. I'm <laughs> well, not... It's an cra- hour I'm of not, material. <laughs> like, see, yeah. I'm really well, not in the know when it comes to comedians because I don't listen to them or watch them a lot. Can you... What, name a comedian. You hate you know. comedy. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, I know Jokoi because he's Filipino. Like, he's a famous okay. Filipino guy. I think but. he has, like, three specials. Really? Yeah. On Netflix, at least. Oh. Like, he may have had some before that. But okay. I feel like he, he, he max has five. Yeah, I was going to say, uh, like, um, including CDs and stuff, he probably has five. So 16 is, is quite a lot. That is a lot. Okay, okay. Good perspective. Uh, but, yeah. I'm going to get in. Basically, I'm giving you a baseline of how, what Gallagher is, and then I'm going to get into the story. Gotcha. Okay. So, he's born in 1946, right? Okay. He's old. Uh, in 1970, he graduated from the University of South Florida with a chemical engineering degree. Ooh, good for him. Wow. Yeah. And a minor in English lit. Okay. <laughs> Don't seem um, to very, like, compliment each other, but... Yeah, <laughs> very random. <laughs> no. No, he's, he's, you know, just taking a dip in the literature, uh, but, but yeah, these are just random things that are strange. In an interview with Howard Stern, uh, he Howard Stern would keep asking him, "Hey, do you think this comedian is funny?" 
And the answer was like always no. Hmm. Like Jerry Seinfeld, he's not funny. Oh. <laughs> it's just like always no. It's yeah. pretty crazy. Yeah. Uh, he ran for governor of California in 2003. He came in 16th. <laughs> wow. Uh, I didn't know that they even like looked past second place. <laughs> yeah, true, actually. <laughs> there was like 200 people that, that wow. year. Wow, okay. Uh, so he did well-ish. It's not like a yeah. ton of people voted for him. but right. uh, uh, So he was also, if you know the WTF podcast with Mark Marin, it's yeah. a very large podcast. Obama was on it. Mm -hmm. So was Gallagher. He was Ooh. the first guest to ever walk out of an interview. Wow. What did Marin uh, do to it? He was just kind of like, uh, he just started asking him questions about uh, kind of like weird racist shit, he said. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, so he's said, these are some quotes from Gallagher that I found interesting before I get into the story, like I said. I, I kind of take responsibility for the mosh pit. He thinks he invented mosh pits. Oh, sweet. Oh, wow. Throwing elbows. It's his comedy shows. <laughs> Can um, you imagine moshing <laughs> at a comedy show? I'm imagining. Yeah. <laughs> like you're... It's the harder you laugh, the harder you hit. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, he said of tattoos on stage during a comedy show, huh. that ink goes through your through to your soul. If you read your Bible, your body is a sacred temple, you dipshit. <laughs> Funny comedy. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> he performed at the Gathering of the Juggalos. I don't know if you know what that is. Yeah, that's no, great. I do that's not. That's the best thing I've heard about him. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Insane Clown Posse. Uh, yeah, that which is a oh, yeah. rap group of clowns. Right, yes, I have heard uh, of that. <laughs> he, he performed at their festival, which huh. is notorious for many reasons. Right, yeah. yes. That is very interesting connection indeed. <laughs> I'm sorry to. These are all random, but I I had to include them because yeah, I find that's, them no, that's fascinating. Great. That's great. I love that he's like has a connection. <laughs> yeah, he said that he owned the rights to the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles before they were big. Uh, I can believe that. Okay, buddy. It seems like something <laughs> weird that he'd be like, "Yeah, this will take off." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so his act is largely prop based, right? Like the sledgehammer was like a sledgehammer. Probably, I don't even remember. I didn't watch videos. I did a lot of research on this, yeah. but I didn't watch videos because I don't want to see his company. He's not yeah. great. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, in the past, it was fairly, like his act was like benign and punny, largely mm. punny. I remember... Yeah. A joke of his, I only watched a single comedy special ever of his, uh, there was a giant, like, armchair behind him on stage, uh, for no reason, uh, but, uh, but the joke was, uh, how come we, we park in the driveway, but drive in the parkway? Uh, yeah. 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 I like it's, those kinds of yeah. jokes. <laughs> i just flew in from london and boy are my arms tired <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah like that's like a street joke but i yeah. i like the observation of that joke yeah yeah that's pretty good. uh yeah. but modern day it's more homophobic racist ignorant and punny um <laughs> he's referred to homosexuals as god's joke oh wow uh, not back in the day, but in the current day. Yeah. Like, I don't know. You people sometimes get a pass for being shitty in, like, the 70s or something. Right. But yeah. we're talking about, like, 2015. Yeah. Um, <laughs> homophobia. Yeah. yeah. I was going to say, it's weird that there is the whole thing of, like, you know, like a product of culture and stuff and, like, how, like, it doesn't make it okay, but at least, like, you can see how, like, you can understand how someone got to that spot or got to that yeah. place. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, but then, yeah, when it's like, yeah, that's, yeah, all right. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so a myriad of other ignorant stuff is going on in his act. And he has also gotten off stage and slapped audience members in the past. Love that. Uh, <laughs> settled lawsuits because of that. That's my kind of show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm super into BDSM. He's a BDSM so. <laughs> <laughs> so he's, Yeah, he's hammering all those watermelons. That's a fetish. Yeah. Uh, a specific uh, watermelon hatred fetish. Like, I'm assuming um, this is as part of the act. No. Oh, he, he was slapped. Just people in the audience because he was angry at them for various reasons whatever oh yeah. uh, I, I wonder if like somebody heckled suddenly him not my thing yeah. <laughs> yeah and settled lawsuits with all those so props he paid they're off lucky people. that the that, uh, slap is all they got well some people uh got uh didn't get hit by the props but they got hit by like watermelon shrapnel right, <laughs> that right. was flying yeah. at their face yeah uh famously people would come to his shows uh like wearing like br- with an umbrella and shit yeah. oh. <laughs> like that kind of stuff because he would just smash just it and he would go everywhere like coming a poncho <laughs> yeah no that would that's like a legit strategy to yeah. do a gallagher show um <laughs> uh he's also very bitter like in the wtf uh episode with mark maron that podcast uh he asked uh questions like why don't i have a tv show yeah. Um, and that's that's all just context to right. this story. Gotcha. That is kind of about Gallagher. <laughs> um, and I'm gonna sum up the story right now, and then I'm gonna get into the nitty gritty. Okay. Gallagher's brother, Ron Gallagher, was going around doing Gallagher's old act and doing his famous sledgeomatic bit. And performing as Gallagher 2. Oh. And Gallagher had to sue his brother in order to get him to stop. Jeez. So I guess they're not close. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> okay. So, so, like, they each have their own version of the story. It's like a shitty comedian version of Rashomon, <laughs> which is... Like a classic Japanese film where three people witness the same thing and all their stories are very different. Mm-hmm. Uh, just for anybody who's like, what the fuck does that mean? So those are the, like, I've seen those like tropes, right? And the yeah. and like yeah, like there's bottle episodes and there's those kind of those episodes of where like people are recalling. Okay, that's good to know. Yeah. So I'll be presenting both sides of the story. Okay, they're both interviewed throughout the lawsuit, so. Right. Let's start at the baseline of their relationship. You were like, Nikki, you were like, so I guess they're not close. Right. <laughs> right. Uh, here's a quote from Ron. Leo pretty much raised me since both my parents worked. Oh. And here's a quote from Gallagher. I was never around my brother at all. He wasn't a part of my life. <laughs> maybe maybe he imagined that he was there. Like yeah. wishful thinking. Yeah, maybe. I I guess maybe they have different um, ideas of relationships, you know, like Ron would oh, yeah. give him the last slice of pizza and Gallagher thought that was everything. But yeah. Ron really <laughs> thought that was you, him giving like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Shit. yeah. <laughs> when, you, when you don't have like, when you don't get anything from your brother and like any little thing you treasure. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You have a sister, right? I do. Nikki. So, what if your sister started a Twitch channel called The Real Nikki 2, <laughs> pretended that she was you, <laughs> and you asked her to stop and she wouldn't? Um, fight. That, that's the fight. situation. <laughs> I'm calling mom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, This snap. is mom's problem. <laughs> She's the mediator. No. Um, I mean, I would try to avoid the lawsuit of at all costs uh but yeah, that uh, yeah. makes sense you know if she did it that's that would be that would be mean yeah yeah you know yeah I, I, yeah that would uh 
damper the relationship a bit. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little. But there's a wrinkle in their story that kind of complicates it. Okay. So, the Sledgeomatic bit, the famous bit by Gallagher. Ron says they thought of the idea together in 1969 when they attached an axe handle to a log and took turns smashing apples and cottage cheese containers at their parents' house. What a great bonding experience. That honestly sounds all like... all can relate to it. It would be fun. Yeah, like that sounds like childhood to me. Yeah, yeah totally. <laughs> Everybody has their own version of that. <laughs> yeah. All yeah. involving cottage cheese, of course, oh, but... Yeah. What a waste. Um... <laughs> Yeah, fuck these guys, right? Just for that. <laughs> How dare they? Um, so Gallagher says it was New Year's Eve in 1976. He had been smashing small fruit with a prop called the Sledgeomatic. When on New Year's Eve 1976, he went for smashing a watermelon. And he didn't plan to do it again, but the next day, the owner of the club called and said, You better do that again, we're sold out! <laughs> wow. <laughs> and that's the origin according to Gallagher. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, the reason why Ron went around doing Gallagher's whole act. Let's hear what Ron has to say. Or, let's hear what Gallagher has to say first. So, Ron was a heavy equipment salesman uh, with his own business. And according to Gallagher, then he came to me in 1990 and told me his business was falling apart and he needed something to do. I told him he could do an imitation show. (laughs) Did you catch that? Mm -hmm. Gallagher told him, do an imitation show. This is according to Gallagher? Yeah. Okay. Uh So, all right. Ron says his his business was plenty successful. It wasn't failing. Uh, Ron also says in 1988, he surprised Gallagher backstage at one of Gallagher's shows by dressing up as him, wearing a wig and the type of hat Gallagher wears, which is like a like a newsy cap. I don't know. Mm-hmm, it's, mm-hmm. Uh, a quote from Ron was, he laughed and said, we got some here. So at my brother's persuading, I got into comedy. Ah, okay. So Gallagher, at least at this point, they both agree. Gallagher told him to do an act. That is his act, basically. Right. Uh, I read an interview. It's a tribute comedian. Yeah, an imitation show. I believe... He, they refer to it as like a franchise, like you're franchising a store. Right. Uh, I read an interview with Gallagher later where he was talking about Carrot Top working with uh, Gallagher's former manager, Gary Proper. And here's a quote. Let me tell you about Carrot Top. Carrot Top was Gary's neighbor in Florida. When Gary and I split up, he took this kid and made him famous using a lot of stage elements that that made me famous. I think it's hilarious that I'm not mentioned as an influence on his website. This guy's like, he's so salty. He's checking the website to see if... <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He checks every day. Yeah, um... he's like refreshing the page. <laughs> it's like, oh, carrot top. <laughs> Can you imagine Scott Thompson, he, which is Carrot Top's real name? His, I think I think two things. Uh, one, to he have he has nothing else going on. That this is what he does. He's like <laughs> fueled by this. Uh, and then second, that the guy, the manager's last name was Proper. Yeah. And he like he managed prop comics. Like he, it's like the verb to prop. You know what? I'd never thought of that. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great observation. I wonder if that's why you got into it. Thank you kindly for your service. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, (laughs) But he also said in that interview, I figured if Carrot Top was going to make money off of my old jokes, I might as well get someone in there to compete with him. And then I had to sue my own brother because he thought he was me. 
so he set up he got his brother to in order to oh this is so convoluted that's yeah <laughs> he has yep. multiple versions of his own story <laughs> yeah huh no this isn't like contradictory to what he said about uh getting his oh this like, was the explanation of behind like how he came up with the idea to create an imitation yeah okay uh so it so sounds like he pretty much condones his brother doing this pretty much right mm-hmm. the arrangement was basically you can do an imitation act just make sure people know when they go to see you that you're not the original gallagher right, right. you are ron gallagher doing an imitation act and it seemed to go smoothly for a while ron would play like smaller clubs because you know imitation act right that uh gallagher wouldn't play and they would each separately tour around quite a bit ron's act was entirely taken from gallagher's old act and he would just perform those jokes over and over while Gallagher was an actual comedian, even if he does suck, which he does. <laughs> so he's coming up with new props and jokes. You know, he's like a real comedian and he's decent at joke delivery. Right. So if you're going, if Ron's act was a little disappointing, if you're expecting to see the actual Gallagher. Right. Uh, which, when he started billing himself as Gallagher too would happen um clubs would promote next week's show and a person on stage would say come back next week johnny fibs will be here and gallagher too people would think they meant gallagher as well right right. oh (laughs) which is creative like you almost deserve you almost deserve the like the credit for that (laughs) well no, I'm not giving them credit for that. Agree or disagree. Them. It was so creative. <laughs> yeah, it's the most creative thing Ron Gallagher uh, was involved in. <laughs> yeah. uh, but uh, Gallagher asked him to stop doing the sludge matic bit. Just to, like, separate his act from... Gallagher's act because right. Gallagher did the sledgematic bit his entire career. Yeah, he was still doing that bit. Uh, so Ron uh, kept doing it, ignoring him. But uh, in 1999, Ron took a gig at a 2,000 seat theater, but he was usually performing at clubs to like 400 people. Mm-hmm. Ooh. And that is around the point where Gallagher filed the lawsuit for trademark violations and false advertising. So it was jealousy. So he didn't want him to do well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, a quote from him is, uh, he's decided he's Gallagher as much as I am. Because you let some, because you let somebody borrow your car doesn't mean it's their car. <laughs> Wait, he actually said that? Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he said that. Yeah, he's, he's like um, a good character. Yeah, he is. Most definitely. Um, Ron said, uh, I'm hurt and confused. I can't understand why he's being this mean. Ron also said, uh, It was never one of our stipulations that I couldn't do large venues. I told him I was doing it, and he didn't say, I'd rather you not. Uh Gallagher says that Ron misleadingly billed the show as a Gallagher show. Mm. He also claimed that Ron's camp, quote unquote, uh, spread rumors that Gallagher had retired and was in drug rehab. Hmm. So it's like, this is the Gallagher 2 show. You're not going to be seeing Gallagher again. Yeah, so right. this is the thing if you want to see Gallagher. You're right. So, throughout the lawsuit, Gallagher's parents took Ron's side. Oh. His dad said in an affidavit that Ron was an emergency stand-in for Gallagher because of Gallagher's, quote-unquote, 
volatile temper and drug abuse. Hmm. Mm -hmm. I can uh, see where there's some I... grounds to that. <laughs> oh, for one hundred percent sure, <laughs> on temper, drug abuse, um, most probably right. for sure. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, he was slapping people. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and he seemed to be angry at everyone. He had um, some rage from somewhere to be smashing watermelons all day. <laughs> right, yeah, right. It's so true. Gallagher says he doesn't have a drug problem and that Ron hasn't ever appeared in any of his shows when Gallagher couldn't make it. Which doesn't really disprove what his dad said about him possibly being a stand-in, emergency stand-in for Gallagher. Yeah, I don't yeah, know. Yeah. Well, you can um, be there, but you might not ever be used. It doesn't mean sure. that you weren't there for that. But I mean, yeah, it's just he said, she said. Yeah. Uh, Ron offered at this point to somewhat change his act to be less uh, Gallagher-y. Mm -hmm. But he said if he stops doing Gallagher's big bits, then it'll cost him his five-bedroom house that he, his wife, and three kids live in. Uh, Wait, Ron said that? Yeah, Ron said that. Because oh. he's getting sued. Right. So he's like, I'll, 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 I'll somewhat change my act, but I gotta do your huge bits. Yeah, I gotta do the best of the best for the, for the income. Right. Yeah. And Gallagher said, uh, all he has to do is stop doing this. Uh, all he has to do to stop this, referring to the lawsuit, is do his own act. Uh, and eventually, Gallagher ended up winning the lawsuit. Mm -hmm. huh. Gallagher's parents saw the lawsuit as taking away a decent living from Ron. Uh, and now Ron, who's pretty much unemployed, has to pay Gallagher damages. So Gallagher ended up estranged from his entire family. Mm. Yikes! And that's pretty much the story. To be so bitter. That's kind of sad. <laughs> that is so sad. Is. Yeah, I was like, I kind of feel for like I feel for Ron's side. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. I also like. Just I mean maybe maybe it was, like, like I've never seen an act. I, I've I've just heard of it and I like I know what he is, like who he is. Mm -hmm. uh, but I don't. I've never like watched any videos of of him doing his act or anything. But yeah, like it doesn't sound that funny. <laughs> 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 like so, <laughs> the fact that this other guy was making like becoming successful, imitating an already right like, unfunny act, just like let him have it. Just this is how he's making his income. Just right. come on. Also, it was your idea in the first place. So right, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Because you wanted to, you know, be a thorn in Carrot Top's side or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I feel like, I mean, I can understand, like, if this is your act and, like, but I, it's, it's, uh, it's, I, I'm going to take Ron's side, too, and say it was, it was Gallagher's fault for starting this. And then, like, when it got too successful, he wanted right. to pull the, like, hit the brakes. But, like, I mean, you can't just pick and choose. Like, this is what you wanted. Yeah. You but he was also, he was false advertising oh yeah yeah oh he was definitely yeah i'm not saying he was completely innocent right <laughs> yeah but uh yeah he he was definitely they're they were both so I, i've learned about this <clears throat> i've learned about this reddit uh this reddit threat thread or what do you even call it reddit subreddit sub yeah subreddit um called am i the asshole yeah which you may be familiar with this but yeah it's basically like one person goes on and says like like I'm involved in this like conflict or argument or whatever, or like this situation happened. Am I the asshole in it? Uh. And then people either say like, yeah, you're the asshole. No, this other person's the asshole or like no assholes here. Or sometimes like you're both assholes. Yeah. Uh, um, so I feel like in this situation, like I guess both, you know, if I was, that's kind of right. how I view, view the world now. Like every time anything happens, I'm like, could I post this? No. <laughs> um, <laughs> But yeah, I think I think they're both. I mean, they're both. They both did great. something wrong. Yeah. But I don't yeah. think it was like worth what happened Losing to Ron at the yeah. end. Yeah, that's yeah. that's a little yeah. overkill. Yeah. 
Yeah. Especially because you had said that Gallagher was the one. Was You said Ga- Gallagher was the one that said that they were very close growing up? No. Or was Ron it Ron? Did. Oh, okay. That. Sorry, I got it yeah, the other yeah. way around. But, like, that's yeah, I don't think that's worth... Um, I don't think that's worth all of that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I would say it's a... Uh, it's... He's just he's just too narcissistic, Gallagher. He, yeah. He yeah. Uh, obsessed with his own success and everything. He's constantly comparing himself to everybody else. Yeah. So yeah. that was, you know, pretty much his downfall uh, mm-hmm. there. So he's not currently... Or is he currently still... Um, I think so? he's, I'm unsure about, like, current, current, but he was a few years ago. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, but, I mean, now nobody's doing comedy shows. Yeah, but, right. yeah. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, he was, like, in 2016, he was still performing. BC, before COVID. Right. Mm-hmm. Different time. But... Uh, so, uh, with that, I think we're gonna take an ad break, uh, and we'll be right back with, uh, Mystic Story and the eventual decision by the real Nicky. <laughs> so much pressure. <laughs> Have you ever considered another human being in your miserable life? Empathy, why don't you give it a shot? Empathy in people like you lie. Empathy, why don't you give it a shot today? Side effects may include basic human decency and not being a total asshole. Boomy Tunes is not liable for any acts of kindness you may commit while under the influence of empathy. Alright, so we're back. Uh, it was pretty cool of the concept of empathy to sponsor the show. Um, that was our advertisement. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, the last couple episodes, uh, Mystic won one with uh, Mad Jack. Mad Jack Churchill. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Woo! And then, Playing his bagpipes. I won one with blue is new. That that's yeah, you deserve to win. That was a real weird one. <laughs> <laughs> that disturbed me. I was so freaked out by that. <laughs> yeah. Still, I still I like thinking about it. Let's move on. Okay. <laughs> so the the deciding the decider in this case uh, is Tom DeLong. Uh, if his latest tweet is about aliens, aliens, Mystic wins. If it's about music. I win. Nikki, you have Tom DeLong's Twitter pulled up. I sure do. What is his latest tweet? His do you, should I like read it or should I just say Yeah, read read, read it. it. Oh his latest tweet it's a retweet tweet. Does that count? Sure. Okay. Um so if UFOs are no longer a matter yeah. of belief, what are they and how do they wait, sorry, what are they and how do they do what they do? Thanks, New York Times, for your continued coverage of the UAP issue. I shouldn't let you choose. <laughs> yeah, but... well, you should choose like every time. Like, I don't know because I would say last winner gets to choose, and that's what I would choose. So... <laughs> we can, yeah. we can. After this one, we can, uh, we can uh, like, have a different have deciding different... mechanism. Yeah, but. You win. Uh, <laughs> do you have something picked out I, for me to consume? Yeah, yeah. You may go ahead and announce it. Yeah. All right. Let me let me make sure I get the name of the the name correct. But I do have it. Um. So I'm I'm going I'm doing an album. Uh, mm-hmm. you know, you you did an album for me, and I was like, I, I enjoyed that. And I know yeah, you're really catchy. you're really into into music. Um. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm really interested to check out the music that you posted uh just a quick little discord plug for our discord um brumi uh shared um something by s i I don't is it star Star Starfucker? yes Starfucker. okay yeah s-t-r-f-k-r i think yeah i have not checked it out yet but i saw it uh this morning and i was like oh man i really i want to check that out 
He described it as chill, semi-funky, synthy vibes that are catchy and pretty consistently good. Ooh. So, uh, yeah, so join the Discord. Uh, link is in our Twitter link tree thing. Um, yeah. Come say hi, check it out. And uh, I will also upload, or I will send a link to this album that I'm going to make Rumi listen to. Mm-hmm. Um, the album is by a band called the Yellow River Boys, which was uh, the album that Tim Heidecker was in, or the band that Tim Heidecker was in. Um, mm-hmm. And the name of the album is Urinal Street Station. Mm-hmm. Um, nice. The, the, <laughs> the album, I believe it has nine songs on it. Um, and every song is about urine. Nice. Um, the very last one is about diarrhea. I feel like our show is too gross. It, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I really. I'm I, gonna be honest. I'm fine with it. I'm gonna listen to it. Yeah. It's gonna be great. I'm yeah. gonna love it. Um, but your last. <laughs> well, I, well, because so yeah, I was gonna do make you. Uh, this is in theme because the last thing that I was gonna make Brumi listen to, or for the last media that he had to consume, uh, was gonna be about urine therapy. And I could not find the playlist, and so then for I used it as my topic uh, for oh, the yeah. last recording. Um, but yeah, I heard I, I uh, <laughs> yeah I um, I think it's a good I think it's gonna be good. I've listened to them all. Um, Great. There are oh, there are ten songs. Uh, okay. Give me one of the titles of the song. Uh, I'll, yeah, I'll read I'll read them real quick. They're they're <laughs> they're all good. Um, number one, hot piss. Number two. Honky Tonk Piss Club, number three, Slurp It Up, uh, number four, Piss Me Off, number five, Mr. Mud, that's a diarrhea one, six, Truck Stop Piss Club, seven, Hot Piss Blues, eight, mm. Someone to Piss on Me, nine, Piss Pig Freak, and ten, Hot Piss Drinker. Wow, mm. they really um, stuck with that theme. Number one, number one is my is my favorite, Hot Piss. Um, okay. But, uh, I'm more of a piss pig freak kind of yeah, guy, yeah, but yeah. <laughs> not having listened to it. Yeah, uh, but, enjoy it. It's but, got a uh, cool album cover. It looks like a you know like a '70s album. Ooh. The Yellow River Boys, the the allusion to rip to urine, and then the band, the the album Urinal yeah. Street Station. And if Nikki or anybody listening doesn't know, Tim Heidecker is from Tim and Eric. Yeah, the absurdist that show. comedy on uh, yeah Adult Swim. Oh. So I, I have high hopes. Yeah, um, I do like the album. I, I listen to it. Some, yeah, I'm it's, very yeah, curious. Listen, that's all you listen to. That's all I listen to. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but anyway, look forward to a Spoils of War episode in the future in which we talk more about piss. Um, <laughs> yeah. How come I wasn't invited to that podcast? <laughs> <laughs> we have talked about excrement many times in our yeah. podcast in a in a podcast that hasn't come out as of recording this that we have recorded uh i talk about poop yeah <laughs> so there's a consistent jenkum yeah, was a drug, poop drug, drug. Yeah. Yeah. it's <laughs> our show is too gross but anyway. the thing is like they're all that's just how reality is like people really use poop and pee for lots of different things in real life and we're reporting on the the truth yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. Instead of right. War of the Weirds, it should be War of the Poop and Pee. Yeah. But <laughs> is that why you guys invited we... me here? <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, your your whole your whole theme <laughs> on your on your stream is I'm you have your happens to be the poop. For the, the fart flock yeah. is yeah. What, the, the poop is emoji, what your the poop emote was was great. <laughs> oh sure yeah i love spamming that thing. Uh, yeah yeah <laughs> uh, but, uh all right cool so that's what Brumi will be listening to and then we'll record uh record that episode next all right so let's get into your thingy yeah my let's let's get into my thingy real quick here we go um i'm just gonna just gonna pop this top real close to the mic hopefully it <sighs> you recognize that sound opening a can i didn't yeah. i didn't hear anything <laughs> oh well my mic picked it up okay it should be in the podcast but uh that is the sound of a good old refreshing brad's drink brad 
His his drink. Brad's drink. Yeah. Should I know what you that is? Heard, you ever heard of Brad's drink? <laughs> no. no. Oh, well. All right. Uh, you may know it by its marketing name, uh, Pepsi. Oh. Hmm. It was originally I've heard of that once or twice. It was originally called <laughs> Brad's drink. Huh. Created hmm. uh, in a town about two hours away from me, in North Carolina. Uh, in 1893 by Caleb Bradham. Ah. Um, he made it at his drugstore. And he it was renamed in uh, 1898. Why wasn't uh, it Caleb's drink? I know, right? Because br- his last name was Bradham. Or Bradham's Bradham. drink. Yeah, like Bradham is how it's spelled. <laughs> and it's like, he just, none of that is a, yeah, I don't know. Um, but the the name Pepsi came from Pepsis, the Greek word for digestion, which is a very weird thing to name your drink after, but True. it was supposed to be like it would help your digestion and energy. It was promoted as like a health drink. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. was Coke. So it healthy. Yeah. Cocaine in it. Cocaine in it, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> it's like, what, guys, you can just have a tasty drink. It's yeah. fine. So yeah. healthy. So, uh, I'm, you know, this, uh, Uh, if Pepsi wants to sponsor us, that'd be great. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, real quick, Pepsi or Coke? Because that's the uh, people ask that. I usually, I Coke. really don't even drink sodas, but I'm drinking this one because I opened it. I'm not. A I, I'll take a Diet Coke, which Diet I was Coke? addicted to. I like yeah. both. Yeah. I like both. Yeah. It depends what I'm eating. If I'm having a pizza, I would prefer to have a Coke, but I that's do enjoy a Pepsi product. Yeah, I don't know why. It's just pizza and Coke. You know, it, I, I will have to try that. It's like a sin I, to I not have them prefer together. Coke. Yeah. yeah, I usually I usually snort a line before taking down pepperoni. <laughs> well, you know, we get faded every time we record, so. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I like Coke. Uh, I feel like Coke is heavier. Like, I can drink like drink a Coke. Like, I can drink a Pepsi with a meal, but I have to drink a Coke solo because I get full. That's, mm. just, that's just me. I don't know. Uh. Um, but, you know, Pepsi. Uh, what, what, would you, what would you be willing to give up for your favorite beverage? I'm not even saying Pepsi. But whatever your favorite drink is, like mine's milk. What would what would you? I, I don't. What would I get up for milk? Um, not a lot. Like I, I, I don't. I don't like, yeah. Milk is very valuable to me. Milk is great. What what's your what's your go to drinks? Beverage as just as a just a drink to drink. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Mine is hands down milk tea so i can Ooh, totally yes. yeah boba yeah boba, and yeah. i don't know what i'm willing to give up for it but i have more than once and many times like i will drive hours to get a milk tea because there yeah. isn't any that is immediately available where i'm from mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. i will drive like a couple hours or more to get my fix. <laughs> nice. I I just had boba for the first time the other day, and like, I want to oh. try milk cat tea because that looks good. Ooh, but, you got what did you try? Um, I've been doing it's like a brown sugar black tea. Oh yeah, 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 good stuff. Um, like the Ceylon tea, yeah, yeah. But uh, that there was one that's uh, taro pudding, but it's not. Yes. There's no actual pudding in it. I mean, it's not. It's just flavored. All right, milk buds. <laughs> <laughs> What would you? Uh, what do you drink, uh, Brimmy? Uh, I couldn't think of like something that I'm like, oh, the best drink ever. Just like the best drink that I very regularly drink. Yeah, probably just lemon zinger tea. Okay. Uh, okay. Throw throw some French vanilla creamer in that. Okay. It's an interesting drink that I enjoy very much. I would be willing to give up fifty cents. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, not uh, much. Would you give up? Uh, like your military for it? Wait, what? Uh, <laughs> do you, if you if you had a military, would you give up military? I was gonna for say, it? I, oh, no. I, I, Where's the I think story I already going? gave up my military because I do not <laughs> have. Yeah. Um, well, we'll 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 get to that. That's just a little teaser info, you know. His... Wait, you have information on a military that I can have? <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. If I have I mean, yep, maybe. a specific drink. <laughs> yeah. no, uh, it's more more what one country is willing to give up for Pepsi. So huh. historically, 
America has been a, a pretty big proponent of capitalism. Um, <laughs> and in uh, 1959, President Dwight Eisenhower wanted, in true imperialist fashion, to show other countries how great the U.S. and capitalism are. So uh, this was during the height of the Cold War, and in order that, that he kind of wanted to, you know, establish communication with Russia that were a little peaceful. Um, so he came up with something called the American National Exhibition, and this was where America and and some like ambassadors, like uh, like when I say ambassadors, I don't mean like actual. Pol- I mean there were like political, you know, people there, but uh, like bureaucrats and all that stuff. But more like uh, cultural ambassadors. Yeah, like um, Dennis Rodman. Right, like Dennis Rodman with North Korea. Um, yeah. So there was going to be it was, it was held in Moscow. Uh, and it was designed to show off uh, how great American culture is and what it had to offer thanks to capitalism. Woo! <laughs> um, so 450 companies contributed to this, uh, including Sears, IBM, General Mills, Kodak, Whirlpool, Macy's, General Motors, RCA, Dixie Cup, and Pepsi. Um so none of these products could be purchased in the USSR uh, at the mm-hmm. time, and I feel like Dixie Cup was really like they they got a, a favor. Somebody did them a favor. Yeah, <laughs> like <laughs> there's like... these other names. <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> General Motors was like, "Hey, can you can my, my my cousin my he like married my my <laughs> wife's cousin? Can, can Dixie Cup come, please?" <laughs> and the other one's like, oh, "All right, but." Uh, <laughs> Yeah, so the American National Exhibition was set up uh, in Moscow, so America could just show off what it, you know, inventions and manufacturing. Um, And so Eisenhower sent uh, the then Vice President Richard Nixon, you may have heard of him, um, to represent America at the exhibit. And Russia was led by Representative, I was represented by Soviet leader Khrushchev. Mm. Um, Some of the things at this exhibit that the u.s brought was uh home appliances televisions uh model houses farm equipment cars boats sporting equipment children's playgrounds books vinyl records canned foods tractors uh lamps so wait, wait, what is what is it? It's an event. Yeah. In which so they these just like go shown. set up all these, all their, all the uh, the inventions and like modern technology. Okay. Um. So so that that people could visit, like that that uh, Russia Russian citizens could visit, and say like, oh, aren't these all these cool things? Like we should open up trade with the yeah. U.S. so we can get these things. Mm. Um. So it's like show and tell, pretty much. Interesting. But, like, globally. Um, there were like whirlpool kitchen appliances and like you know all this stuff ovens and um uh, and Khrushchev looked through oh by the way all these things that American all these are like consumer goods because you know it's all about like consumerism which uh and and they were like they were not even in really American homes because they were like the latest and greatest so. Mm-hmm. Americans didn't even have them, and they wanted. They were trying to push them so that like they would be in every Russian home. Yeah, <clears throat> but uh, so Khrushchev, you know, went to this exhibit and walked through, and it was just like, this is all garbage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He looked at all this like color TV was something that they showed, and he's like, this is this is these are just doodads and gizmos and gadgets. Uh, and the reason that he was I unimpressed mean... by this, what's that? <laughs> I was just gonna say, uh, sure. I mean, <laughs> computers are just do that. Kids, most of gadgets. Yeah. Well, he, his so his he he's he was uh, his explanation was like, uh, we have like heavy industry and like space technology and then space advancements, like uh, mm-hmm. so you know there was the there was this the race to the moon sort of thing, you know. Uh, yeah, which they did not win. Correct, but at the time, you know, they're like, yeah, who knows? Because their space yeah. exploration, like their technology, and like what they were inve- in, in, uh, investing money in, that was like a pretty huge thing. 
And so he was like, all this, all this stuff that you're showing us, like Russian scientists and technologies will, will all have this stuff in a few years, but like we're, yeah. we're making strides on like space exploration and like really important things. Mm-hmm. And, um, so, you know, Nixon, the, the reports say that they kind of had a little bit of an altercation, not, not physical, but they got in arguments and stuff. And, uh, Khrushchev was like, hey, you know, the reason that you don't like communism is because you're too stupid to understand it. You don't even get it. You're just dumb American. And so Richard Nixon was not thrilled to hear that. And uh, he was like, no. Yeah. So <laughs> pretty much. You're became... a dumb American. Oh, wait. No. <laughs> Russian. Uh, yeah. So they, they you know, they, things got pretty heated. And uh, this, the, the CEO of, of Pepsi. Um, his, uh, oh, I lost his thing. So the CEO of Pepsi, uh, had, had talked to Richard Nixon and I was like, Hey, you gotta push, you gotta push Pepsi. (laughs) This is important (laughs) now. Yeah. I I know everything about diplomacy. I know everything about (laughs) Russia. This Pepsi shit. Oh, yeah. I happen to be the CEO? It's pretty good. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he's like, it's it's real good. You should push it. And so there there are two different two different uh, recordings, I guess, of how this took place. Um, mm-hmm. But the one is that the uh, things got heated and then Nixon stayed true to his word and took uh, Khrushchev over to a vending machine and got him a Pepsi. Uh, the other, the other uh, account says that the CEO of Pepsi, the representative that was there, uh, was like ran over when he saw them like heated and fighting and Khrushchev actually like wiped his brow because he became so enraged that he was sweating. And so, he, like the the representative of Pepsi, um, his name is Donald Kendall, ran over and and offered him a Pepsi to cool off. I mean, that is a Pepsi. I was just about to say, is this <laughs> that where is all that came from? That's that's where that came from. That this, yeah, all of those. That's where this ad came from. Huh. That 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 was a uh, some supposedly Damn. something that had happened. But mm. I have doubts. Khrushchev <laughs> loved it. Well, okay, the two options, the two options, like, you either believe that that happened, because they're at this fair where, like, people are sampling things and taking part, so he could have, like, easily that happened, like, ran over and be like, here, drink this. Sure. Um, and... But it's like, it saved the day, and I'm like, eh, it's probably <laughs> Well, it did, no, it did save the day. It did save the day. But you, well, well, if hold, that story's true. <laughs> yeah, hold, hold back a second, yeah. because the, uh, so the other option is either, like, he saw that and took that opportunity, like, as a great salesman. Or uh-huh. that this that Richard Kimball actually, uh, oh, sorry, Kendall uh, ran ran up to him and was like, "Hey, sorry, Donald Kendall. Who is Richard Kimball?" Richard Kimball is the name of he's an I actor. Think it's fucking no, oh, it's, he's a politician. It's an Arnold Schwarzenegger character. What? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> wow. yeah, it says he's a politician, but. Is, yeah, is he was he the uh, was he the guy who was uh, in the Turbo Man? Was that him? I don't remember. It's one of the big ones. Why does that name come <laughs> to my head so? Oh, Richard. Or maybe wait, was it the Fugitive? Maybe I don't know. Anyway, I right. I remember Kimball as a name yeah. of an Arnold Schwarzenegger thing. All right. I'm, anyway, I'm, I'm done for that. Hey, it's Dan <laughs> uh, Donald Kendall. Uh, th- so the other option is that Donald Kendall. Kendall just was like in cahoots with Richard Nixon that they were like talking all the time. And he's like, Hey, you got to remember to push Pepsi and that Nixon did. So yeah. I'm, I'm less, I'm less likely to believe that and more likely to believe that he saw an argument and like ran over. Um, mm. that's just, I, don't know. That's just I, I believe that he, why, why is that true? I mean, Nixon's chummy with a fucking Pepsi guy. I believe that more. All right. You know what I mean? I believe Nixon's corruption more than I believe this fucking miracle (laughs) man came with a Pepsi, the greatest drink of all, and just shoved it in Gorbachev's face. Yeah, it's hard to... 
But I, I just don't think, like, I can believe that, like, he would have told that to Nixon, but I have a hard time believing that Nixon would actually, like, all right, let's go over this fitting machine. Like, I'm going to I'm gonna do it. But anyway, sure. w- regardless of what happened, like, there was a heated debate. Uh, Khrushchev tasted the Pepsi, and there's actually a picture of him, like, taking the sip uh, mm-hmm. with, with Nixon and Donald Kendall and loved it. Of course. And was like, all right, we're, we need to get Pepsi into – into the Soviet Union. We got to have it. Um, Not enough cocaine. And but they, we yeah. <laughs> well, Coke, Coke declined to participate in this exhibit. Ooh, that was yeah. their big mistake. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yeah. in terms of like strategy and, and like Pepsi definitely has got it going on. Um, but uh, yeah. So, so Russia was like, all right, well, let's, let's do it. And let's broker a deal. And Pepsi was like, "All right, how are you going to pay us?" And Russia was like, "Well, we'll play you. We'll pay you in Russian rubles, uh, you know, you know, Soviet currency." And then Pepsi was like, "Nah, because that's pretty much useless outside of like any anywhere that's right. not Russia. Like, yeah, nobody is nobody is a fan of what's going on here in the rest of the world. So like, your rubles are not getting very far." Uh, and so they said, "All right, well, how about we we pay you in vodka?" Uh, <laughs> Stolichnia vodka, and because that was not available in the U.S., and so Pepsi took mm. them up on that deal, and Pepsi was the sole distributor of Russian vodka in the U.S. Uh, I wish the story was like they just gave it to all their employees and they were all drunk all the time. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that, uh, yeah I, that that would have worked. I'm sure that they drank plenty. Um, sure. So so they yeah they they opened trade and and uh, Pepsi became the, like the first uh, U.S. capitalism company to sell and manufacture things in Russia uh, in the USSR. But the story does not end there. Okay. Although that's a pretty cool achievement. It is. Uh, in 1980, uh, the U.S. boycotted. Soviet products because they had invaded Afghanistan. And so the US market that was just not accepting Russian vodka anymore. And they had to re up on their contract and Pe- Russia was like, yeah, we definitely want to keep Pepsi and Pepsi was like, well, I'm not accepting your currency and now no one's accepting your vodka because no one wants to trade with you. Right. <clears throat> and I if you like you got to give us something valuable, you know? So most com- most countries, I think, would think uh, like v- precious metals, gold, silver, things like that. And the Soviet government thought, huh, we got a lot of war equipment. If you want, if you want some military equipment, and the deal went through. Pepsi took them up on it, <laughs> and so uh, in or like in. Pepsi was gonna get, provide them with with Coke with a Pepsi products and some. So, so <laughs> they those, were gonna get a bunch of Coke. Say, I was gonna that. say Coca Cola <laughs> because it, so I, I, this thing one thing that I hate about growing up in the South is that, like every soda is referred to as a Coke. Yeah, right. I think that's real stupid, but it's like ingrained in my brain, and so yeah. that I was gonna say like Coca Cola was like wait that's not it. Um, so in return, Pepsi got seventeen submarines. A cruiser, <laughs> a frigate, and a destroyer. I'm sorry, what's a frigate? Uh, it's like a warship. It's like a huh. they're like huge okay. frigates, they're like just like very large. A lot of okay. times, people use frigates for like sh- for like shipping, but it's a. It's also, a, you could just use it if you get frustrated. You're like frigate. Yeah, man. That, that's yeah. the frigate I know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's the frigate we all know. <laughs> like, well, this frigate. Um, the Wait, dictionary so it's like... says. Pepsi got this, not even like the U.S. It's just Pepsi. Has right. This. this was payment. Yeah, they paid Pepsi. <laughs> okay. They paid Pepsi in in war war machines. Okay. Uh, so they a, a frigate is according to the dictionary a warship with a mixed armament, generally heavier than a destroyer, and a kind originally uh, introduced for convoy escort work. Huh. Um, okay. Real real quick, I just need to mention this in case it's appearing on the audio. There are the loudest crows ever oh. to exist, uh, crowing. Uh, so 
I'll try to scrub that out of the audio. But I can hear it there. All. I don't That's hear what it is. Either, yeah. But if yeah, if your yeah. if your audio is picking it up, your recorder. <laughs> yeah, I it might be because. Well, why don't you sell some Pepsi for some guns and shoot oh, the crows? Oh, there you no. go. Yeah. <laughs> it's I think it's illegal to shoot crows. Oh, it's there's crow hunting I think certain so. times, but uh, so. yeah, some places don't. They're it's prohibited. Yeah. Yeah. Crows are well. I imagine are, just yeah. taking a gun out and shooting birds in the sky is frowned upon. Yeah. in most in general, like, general public. <laughs> did you, did areas. you hear? Did you hear uh, over? Uh, I think it was Fourth of July. A lady, uh, a lady was in the hospital because like somebody shot a bullet into the air and it went came down and hit her in the chest. Oh, oh, that happens a lot. Actually. That's crazy. That's that's a thing. Like people celebrate Fourth of July and other things by shooting into the air yeah. and then those bullets eventually come, come down. down most of the time most of the time that. they're hitting nothing yeah i always that's wonder so, that like i so see wild. that in movies where people will be yeah. shooting in the air and i'm like what happens when those fall like yeah <laughs> well yeah. people go to the hospital uh, that's what happens <laughs> people go to the hospital or like it'll hit a windshield of a car it'll break that's it all, yeah, yeah that, that, that. that can't be good <laughs> yeah um yeah so don't yeah, don't shoot the crows. Uh, let them. They just don't be on the podcast. But anyways, <laughs> uh, so yeah, we got seventeen submarines, a cruiser, a frigate, and a destroyer in return for what Pepsi the? products. Um, and Coke was eventually allowed to sell things in the USSR, but they couldn't sell their like the, any of their colas. They could only sell like their like Minute Maid and Fanta stuff. <laughs> like they couldn't sell any colas because the Pepsi had, uh, they, yeah, dominate. Uh, they dominated the market there. Um, mm. So it was it was joked upon. It was joked that Pepsi was more effective at disarming the USSR <laughs> than the United States was. <laughs> yeah. I can see that. Um, the the um, the the ships that were traded to pepsi uh were worth three billion dollars holy hell when did this happen this happened in 1980 Ooh, just, that's a lot right. I just need to know sorry pepsi sorry this was 1989 days. this was 1989 because the 1980 was when the boycott started to happen i see and so this was 1989 when their contract was like ready to was their contract was up for the vodka stuff Oh, and they had the hmm. yeah so 1989 um what were you saying nikki i just i just want to know what pepsi did with these things um <laughs> that's a good question if anything i don't know um the i do not i don't i think they just sold them they like they used the they used the equipment they probably sold it to the u.s or tra- like traded it and and like for actual cash because that's what they were really after because you can't fund you can't like make product, right? So they they just turned it around. Wow. But for the t- for the for a brief time, when they had the seventeen subs, cruiser, frigate, and destroyer, Pepsi had the sixth largest military in the world. <laughs> mm. oh, and that is my story. <laughs> wow. How you know how from vodka to war machines. <laughs> Pepsi, Pepsi really became a <laughs> yeah, pretty pretty powerful uh, company. Yeah, you know, another way that story could have gone is Pepsi like <laughs> Just... starting their own nation yeah. now that oh they had God. a military. Imagine. First thing, we're gonna declare war on Coca Cola. Oh, <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> we're Co- not even a nation. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> Right? Yeah, I mean, you're not yeah. even a nation. What losers? Yeah, they yeah. could have ended badly. Uh, they could have. Yeah. Imagine being. Imagine like getting the memo where you're like working in a Pepsi man, like like uh, manufacturing facility, and you get a memo mm-hmm. that morning. You're like, all right, well, you're now gonna go uh, serve in this army. We're gonna you're gonna be <laughs> piloting this frigate. Uh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> like, frigate. oh, frigate! Not a frigate! The only natural response to that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I use it all the time in my daily vernacular. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, so we've heard the story of Gallagher Two. Yeah, and we've heard the story of what are you going to title this? What is this going to uh, be the title of this? Maybe just like Pepsi's military, Pepsi Army. 
Pepsi Army. Yeah, let's do a Pepsi <laughs> Army. I like that. Uh, Pepsi Navy. Oh, yeah. yeah Pepsi Navy. Actually, yeah. yeah, true. Yeah, it was a Navy. All right, Pepsi or Navy. Or Pepsi's. How about this? Pepsi apostrophe S. Pepsi's Navy. There you go. Navy. There we go. Yeah. Uh, so uh, we've heard about Gallagher 2 and Pepsi's Navy. Now we turn to the real Nikki <laughs> with a one for the first eye. Oh, boy. <laughs> Which of these two stories is weirder? Um, uh, well, I will... And you... Okay, so go ahead. You can explain your reason. I will. <laughs> um, I'm going to start off by saying both of the stories were pretty weird. <laughs> yeah. So good job. <laughs> good, good. Um, Thank you. <laughs> it's our one goal. Yes. Um, the Gallagher story was very interesting, um... But I will say that I, I, by the time that story ended, I felt more sad mm, <laughs> than mm, anything. Mm. <laughs> I find Gallagher himself as a character probably could have won the, won War of the Weirds just like this comedian <laughs> exists. Yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, I'm going to have to give it to the Pepsi, Pepsi's Navy because nice. that is... I that I mean you started it off saying like oh what would you do for your favorite drink but that really mm-hmm. escalated yeah, yeah that's, that's really <laughs> it's just like a, like you only think of well I only think of like countries having um you know submarines and those kinds of things and at one point Pepsi had um all of those military vessels and such so yeah. it's. Yeah just very uh, unexpected story um, all right nice. the only time the real nikki is on the show everybody <laughs> so no, i'm uh, sorry ruby no, but no, if no. this was war of the sad hands <laughs> down yeah. you won <laughs> yeah <laughs> or if you just led yeah, that's with that's just my daily life yeah. uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um but yeah, no, they were both uh, enjoyable stories. Thank you, <laughs> thank you so much for being our first guest. Yeah, I enjoyed much. it. Uh, it was fun. Yeah, I love listening to these kinds of things all the time, and I have no idea how you guys find these stories. But like, it's just like this is the only corner of the internet that, or you know, whatever want to call it um the weird place that the i can find these really visit. random stories yeah. that i've never heard or will ever hear the other one finds it yeah, yeah. <laughs> i keep waiting to like one of us one day we're gonna like i like surely i'm gonna have heard about something that he's talking about or right. vice versa and like like we've sometimes it's been like adjacent things to it but like yeah like i'd heard about gallagher but i didn't know all right the, like controversy and stuff <laughs> uh, mm. so yeah it's uh, it's like, cool. I'm waiting for us to present on the same thing one day. That's uh, true. I'm surprised that hasn't happened. It's yeah. like how many weird <laughs> stories could, like these could there be, and you guys just keep coming up yeah. with more. Yeah. So it's cool. It's what we do best. Yeah. Uh, but uh, that's the show for this week. So uh, look forward to a Spoils of War episode, uh, largely about piss drinking. <laughs> uh, Hot so, on my lips. Uh, Best can't lyrics. wait to hear. <laughs> uh, so, look forward to that, uh, and <laughs> we'll see you on the next one. Hey. Thanks for having me. Bye.